Greetings, unsettled souls! Prepare to be astonished! Yes, astonishing it is Melatonin Mondays, volume number three with Christelle and I. Um, you wouldn't believe this. Our, our studio is infested with fleas. I, my cat has managed to infest my entire studio. So uh, that's, that's just remarkable. So we're going to zip through this as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, Christelle, did you know that storms were racist? Or not even storms, but the weather and even the very firmament itself? Uh, really? The, the very heavens itself. Um, I, I was floored. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know that the sky itself did not like people, the minorities. I, I didn't know. But Conservative Daily, uh, Conservative Tribune here, are you looking forward to Monday's eclipse? This is when the eclipse was going to happen, but it doesn't matter that it already has. Stay with it. This is some social justice warrior madness here. The first full eclipse to hit the U.S. in decades. You filthy, filthy racist. That's at least the take of Brooklyn Law School professor Alice Ristroff, who used a staggering 4,544 words, Christelle, in The Atlantic, to explain the phenomenon of the moon blocking the sun just isn't diverse enough for her tastes. On August 21st, 2017, a total solar eclipse will arrive here, of course it did, mid-morning on the coast of Oregon, Aristotle writes, the moon's shadow will be about 70 miles wide and it will race across the country faster than the speed of sound. Exit the... I think it just happened. Exiting the eastern seaboard shortly before 3 p.m. local time, it has been dubbed the Great American Eclipse, and along its path, there live almost no black people. No, really. The movements of the firmament are indeed unconcerned with white privilege, although one would imagine Ristoff would be aware of this already. To be fair, she writes, uh, she does note that presumably this is not explained by the implicit bias of the solar system. It is a matter of population density, and more specifically, geographic variations in population density by race. So she's using all these big words to sound great, great and wise, for which the sun and the moon cannot be held accountable. Still, an eclipse chaser is always tempted to believe that the skies are relaying a message, Ristol said. In other words, the sky doesn't like black people. Not only does Donald Trump hate black people and basically all minorities, but so does the very sky. Friends, they're pushing for a race war here. They want people that have no problem with each other, no matter what color they are, to be at each other's throat. That's what they want. Um, among those in the problematic exclusions, the, the eclipse will light upon Oregon as a blue state, which had a provision for the original state constitution in 1857 that prohibited any Negro or mulatto from entering and residing in the state. So Wyoming and Idaho, which don't have any, many, many minorities living in the Latino American Indian Alaska, basically breaking this down, Christelle, to say that the, the very heavens are now showing the racism of America is what they're trying to say. Uh, in rural, rural Illinois, the KKK used to be very active. Leavenworth, Kansas, where the percentage of blacks among all federal prisons is close to 40%. And of course, Missouri, the Missouri Compromise, the Deep South. Well, what do you, re what do you really need to ask? While not a particularly difficult article to understand, the overreaching argument Ristoff makes, listen to this, Christelle, is about the coherent as a Python novel is to a second grader. For its medium, it's also about as long, though nowhere was well written. Nearest I can understand, it's basically that the Electoral College in two senators per state is very, very bad thing and disfranchises African Americans and stuff. That doesn't have any awful lot to do with the sun and the moon, but people got tired of hearing liberal windbags rant about the